much. They're so different now. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear Gussie. <laughs> I hardly ever see movies anymore. Well, there was a controversy uh, when the North Star came out that since um, World War II, st- when, before World War II started, uh, Hitler, Germany, and Russia were actually allies. But yes. in the middle of the war, Hitler then turned and attacked Russia. And that's kind of the story of the film told from the point of view of one small village uh, yes. that they you know, were once allies, they become victims. And the film was made at uh, President Roosevelt's request because he wanted the American public to be sympathetic to what was going on in Russia. They were now being attacked by the uh, yes. Germans. So the film came out and it got a lot of praise and it did good business, but some people were detractors. So in the 50s, after the Red Scare, yes. remember the HUAC committee? The film was re-released by the studio, but they changed the location from Russia to Hungary, and they changed the name of the film to Armored Attack to kind oh, of... Oh, I, I know. I don't... I, I wasn't very aware of that. I wasn't until it came out. Mm-hmm. And I had a lot of fan letters saying, uh, we thought this was the North Star. And then uh, uh, and then all this new stuff started, but politically started. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, I never get involved in politics. Well, I don't like them. I don't want any part of them. <laughs> I just... I. I, I can only do what my heart feels. Well, one of the nice things about the Library of Congress is we are preserving the film as it originally played. And oh, put, good. So Thank it will. You. It, you're welcome. It will be seen that's, the way nice it was know. intended. Thank you for sharing that with me. No, you, you are in a wonderful position to see so many things in film that the, the average public even doesn't even know about, you know. And I think it's very exciting and very interesting job to have. Well, do you remember Lillian Hellman, the lady who wrote the original story and screenplay? Yes, I, I, she came several times on the set. And we all had, I asked to meet her if it was possible. She was flying in from somewhere to have meetings with the producers and the director about the film. And I said, I, I want very much to meet her and uh, thank her for this book that she wrote and that I'm thrilled to play Claudia. And, God, I haven't thought of that name in 50 or 60 years. <laughs> it just came out. That was my name in the film, Claudia. And, uh, but she was, uh, she was rather a unique lady. That's the only way I can express it. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was always very kind to me, and she wrote me, I still have in one of my scrapbooks a really marvelous letter of my rendition of Club Dia. Wow. And she appreciated the role that I played and the way I did it. And I was very grateful for that. That's really special to be you know, noted by the screenwriter that they, she liked what you did with the performance. Oh, I've had that many times. And I'm trying to think another famous author that wrote the book that we did. I can't think of it now. I did so many films, <laughs> and uh, which I was grateful to do. And uh, I just, I, en- I enjoyed every one of them and the people I was privileged to meet and share my time with. And I usually kept in touch with everybody until they passed away, but just about everybody's gone has been for a long time. Well, we're very That's fortunate the- to have you with us. What year to- was that? Um, it was 1943. Thank you. I knew it was not, but somewhere between 42 and 45, I knew it was somewhere between there. Mm -hmm. Because I I haven't even thought about it in heaven knows when. I just haven't. So you haven't seen the film for years? Oh, not for years. (laughs) Not for years. I see them once, and occasionally... uh, like the, the last few weeks, it's been fun. You know, I have this uh, this thing that's called vertigo, and I'm oh. busy all the time. I'm sorry. And I see three of everything. And uh, so I'm I'm in bed more than I like to be. But uh, uh, I still work on, I'm working on three books. I'm having more <laughs> fun because I've had such happy memories. But... Uh, Mm-hmm. I'm working on three books, but... Uh, I know, and you volunteer, and you have a huge doll collection, and you get phone calls from people around the world who love to talk with you. Oh, my goodness gracious. 
I just gave 6,000 of my dolls to the History Museum here in California. And twice a month, there are 20 volunteers that come to the museum, the Storage Museum, and we have over 7,000 boxes of dolls to go through. And, uh, oh, I I have the best time because I haven't seen them in years. You know, they've all been packed away. And all the volunteers, we sing, we play good music and uh, work to music. I've always done that when I'm sorting and separating things. And I love David Rose and Henry Mancini. They're my favorites. So we play their background music all the time while we're unpacking and doing things. But, no, I just have such a good time with all, all that I do. But now I'm getting a chance to see my dolls again. Not very often, but we're, we're just getting them out and getting them sorted and separated. Because there sure are a bunch, but they are really quite miraculous. And I'm so thrilled that the public will finally be able to see my doll collection. Six thousand dollars. That's amazing. Um, I notice in the credits they have James Wong. How is the photographer, the famous yes. uh, Chinese American cinematographer? He was great. Yes. Do you did you get to talk with him ever? Yes. Oh, yes. At lunchtime, I uh, I we always had lunch either catered at uh, and most so many times uh, the directors and the producers and the cameraman would prefer to have lunch on the set, mm-hmm. or away from the cafeteria or wherever we normally would eat, because it was more quiet. And uh, we just did that. And my mother always made sure that we brought our own lunch, because being that I could only work for not really eight hours, I had three hours for lunch, I mean three hours for schooling mm-hmm. every day, one hour for lunch, and four hours to work. So my time was very limited and very valuable. But um, we would always eat in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. And Mother taught Mrs. Granger and Farley to do that, too. Mm -hmm. It it saved, in the the long run, it saved time for the individual. Mm -hmm. And it it was true, and it gave us time to be on our own by ourselves while we were eating and not being disturbed by other people. Some days I was I would join take my lunch and join the cameraman and uh, uh, he he never ever went to the commissary he only had lunch catered into the set and uh, he was a very unique man very talented pardon me he was very talented he has a lot of good films to his he credit he was a very fine cameraman. You mentioned um, you're going to school for three hours a day. Who did you go to school with if you were on the lot? Oh, I only I had a private tutor. Mm-hmm. Shirley and I were the only two kids that worked in films that had a private tutor. Shirley Temple. One of my closest friends was Freddie Bartholomew, mm-hmm. and he went to school with all the other kids that worked at MGM, mm-hmm. like Margaret O'Brien and Freddie Bartholomew oh, and Becky Cooper. Ha- have you seen Margaret O'Brien lately? I haven't seen Margaret in over a year. Oh, and her her ex husband mm-hmm. is is an incredibly fine photographer, and I'm having him copy over four thousand of my pictures for different things, different books, mm-hmm. different. Uh, a lot of people are writing books now about my era in the forties, and about and I'm included in a lot of things. So uh, I I don't know. I just. I, I'm because I'm so interested in people. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I guess I spend as much time as I can, you know, with the different people that uh, ask me to be involved in their books or do interviews for them and so on. Mm-hmm. But I've always enjoyed doing that very much. I just mentioned Margaret O'Brien because I watched a film of hers called "Our Vines Have Tender Grapes." Grapes, oh yes, I love that oh, there movie. There was a little boy in that. Um. Yeah, I'll have to think of what his name is. I was. can't think of his name. I can see his little face. With all the freckles? But Margaret has always been a very close friend of mine. I met her when she was 10 years old. I was, I'm was i about three years older than Margaret. And uh, But no, we've always been good friends, and her husband is a very close, her ex-husband is a very, we were all very close friends. And her husband is Roy Thorson, and he's a brilliant brilliant photographer. So I've always been 
I have to be so careful to whom I allow to copy my films because, unfortunately, one man made a lot of copies of my my personal films and other things. He actually stole them. Oops. And it took me a long time to get them back. I didn't, well, I never really got them back. But to, it took, luckily, I discovered it at, in time that I couldn't allow him to, to copy any more films of mine because he was distributing to them and selling them. And uh, very, very bad experience. Very rude. I'm oh, sorry? He was very rude. Yes. Yeah. Very I, thoughtless and unkind. And mm -hmm. I don't like people like that. They no. have no reason to be that way. I looked up. Think. I looked up the little boy who worked with Margaret O'Brien and Our Vines Have Tender Grapes. His name was Jackie Butch Jenkins. Jenkins. Oh, yes. He was a cute little boy. He looked like a little tough kid. <laughs> and, uh, and he had a marvelous face, yeah. marvelous character face to be so young. Oh, yeah. And, of course, his hair was all askew, which was a... He was just darling. He was a cute little boy and a wonderful uh, little character actor. No, all those, all, any kids ever in films, mm -hmm. I didn't get to know well, but I made sure I would write them a note and wish them good luck and, and uh, have, have, hopefully had as much fun and, and, and as many friends as I did. I loved what I did and I loved the people that I met and I was so grateful for the opportunities that God gave me. Well, you're, you're very kind to share your time with us and we don't want to you know, monopolize it. I'm sure somebody else is trying to call you to do an interview. That's all right. I've got an appointment for two two interviews this afternoon. <laughs> but other than that, I'm pretty good for this week. <laughs> well, Jane, you are a doll. Thank you for this information. Matt's going, to oh, Matt's going to introduce the film on Friday night and share some of these stories with the public. And, oh, how nice. And how nice. They'll be singing your praises at the Library of Congress. Well, God bless you for what you do and the wonderful knowledge that you share with the world that's so important. Well, you need, you need to fly out here sometime. I can. The weather's about 30 degrees cooler today. <laughs> oh, dear. I think you'd like it. I love that. <laughs> no, I, I go a lot of places and have what I call just inspirational talks, mm. sharing with people and in, at their work and what they do. I love that. It's fun to do. So if you ever can use me, let me know. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Thank you, and thanks for your call. I was happy to hear from you. Well, God bless you. You are a dear lady, and I, I, I treasure our friendship. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.